Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Welcome back. I hope everybody's having a great day. Yeah, it's a, like a beautiful eve of something. Yeah, I've seen people making reference to today as like the uh, eve of destruction, the eve of desolation, the eve of abomination. Yep, D-Day Eve, yep. A lot of that going on. Obviously, tomorrow will be a big day, and, you know, I'm, I'm already anticipating waking up at 3 a.m. And, and not getting back to sleep. I am too. Yep, <laughs> definitely. So we, we have gotten some messages from the Galactics, and I know somebody uh, was out there said, who's the Galactics? Uh, referencing the Galactic Federation, again, Cindy's been uh, in contact, and not just channeling where you don't know exactly what's coming through because she could basically just contact them pretty much at will now. Um and get messages. Sometimes, you know, we need to do some meditation, you know, to strengthen the signal of what's coming through. Um, but in the Galactics, again, Galactic Federation of Light, uh, well, the ones that we're in contact with are Pleiadian, although we do have Arcturians that, that do assist us in light body activation as well, uh, and very, very benevolent beings. And so, Laurel is our contact along with Kira. And uh, so we did get some info. And basically what they're saying is uh, there's about a one third chance that tomorrow may be uh, very, very let. Destructive. Yeah. Destructive slash eruptive slash, you know. Yeah. Think of how Mount Etna looked <laughs> as we were talking about today, you know, in the first video. Right, where a lot of things could go down and go down really fast and change the face of the country in, in an instant. It's all about change. And, of course, the positive forces of light, you guys, us, we want positive change that's peaceful. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't want to see chaos. We don't want to see destruction. We don't want to see people hurting each other. Uh, as we've alluded to many, many times, we understand that this system has to change. And unfortunately, we're not seeing the change happen in the right direction. And many people are very, very frustrated at this point in time. And that's part of the plan, is, is that fl frustration. Oh, definitely. That's a really important part of their plan, too, is to raise us up, you know, or raise our hopes up and then smash, raise our hopes up and smash, and then really kind of, uh, take apart the human psyche. Yeah, I mean, this says it all. We could, you know, really pick this apart in so many ways. We've talked about the eagle, and then, of course, you have the double-headed uh, version of the eagle over here. The, ego, the eagle has been uh, signified in many different, quote-unquote, empires, countries, um, sovereignties. You know, think, think Rome, right? Uh, and also, you know, think the U.S. And, and we also saw it as the symbol of NIZI Germany, right? We see the all-seeing eye over there, and you see that number 33 inside the pyramid. And so this is, you know, this is basically Freemasonry, and the Scottish Rite in particular. Interesting, there's somebody we know with a lot of Scottish blood in them that they've talked about as well, as well as... Uh, Germanic blood as well, and, and very, very interested in lineage, has, has also been interested in lineage. Ordo ab chaos, and that's, you know, order of chaos. That's the signature line, that's the motto, order out of chaos. Do we see chaos around us? Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's incredible, the chaos around us right now. Most certainly. And, you know, this this is, it's all out there. Black old sun, right? Mm -hmm or the black sun, and then, well, of course, we can get into Saturn, and we could get into a lot, and we, and we have a lot of things on the agenda. Once we get past all the geopolitical stuff that's going on, there's a lot of stuff that we've gotten that we want to share with you guys um, that's been um, very, very interesting, and and we, we will be sharing. Right now, it's just been, like, so crazy with the, the geopolitical situation, and, you know, we about six to eight people every day that we're working with trying to help with whatever situations they have going. 
Um, it, right now it does look dark. It always looks darkest before dawn. And that's, again, part of the bigger plan, as we're saying. Yeah, we could go back to, interestingly enough, you can see what month that was. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and, and the day, too, where that, that statement was, was made. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing how dumb they think we are. Yet, here we are. You know, we, we haven't changed the system yet. And, and we're talking 30 years. It's been 30 years since that statement, you know, was made. Yeah, and, you know, not a whole lot has happened except for more clampdown. Yeah, and we see that all-seeing eye again, and we see the date, you know, and then we also see Novus Ordo Seclorum, which is a new world order, right, which comes out of chaos. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yep. It's, it's very plain. It's right in our face, and yet the vast majority of people don't have a clue. Still, after all this, the vast majority of people, well, you know, they're they're kind of like those uh, beings that walk around in the show The Walking Dead, just kind of going. Aah. And unless you you're one that does listen to this channel, they're not going to have a clue. Or we could look at them as being sheep, yeah. you know, and of course sheep can be led to be sheared. Mm -hmm. Or they could be led to something else as well. Right. That's yeah. They sure can. So you know, here is the thing: we we again we have to be trying to both awaken as many people as possible to what's going on, and it can be very very disconcerting when you know even people that we see on a regular basis that are watching this channel mm -hmm. are still semi asleep sometimes, and that could be mind blowing. How, how people could still be semi-asleep after everything that we've been witnessing. But it is the case. So again, you know, we must keep trying to wake up others. And it's going to be tougher when, you know, we're having to do it with tape across our lips, you know, our hands tied behind our back, blindfolded, and they've spun us around in a circle 3,000 times. Well, or maybe just 33 maybe times. Maybe just 33. It is. It does get really frustrating to see this going on and on and on and on. So this is part of it. They, they, this is what we've gotten, too, from you know the guides from the Galactics. They want you to feel that no matter what you do, you have no power. Mm -hmm. You're helpless and hopeless. And that's what they're trying to instill is a feeling of helplessness and hopelessness. Well, yeah, and you know, they put out plenty of evidence for that to show that they want us to feel that, like no matter what you say, how loud you yell, no matter how much evidence is in your face, there's nothing you can do to stop what's in front of you. So tomorrow is gonna be another day of pomp and circumstance and ceremony of the, uh, of the, the regal class, we could say. You know, there was an interesting article that was posted in the Wall Street Journal, Thursday, April 23rd, 1992. And I'll put a, a little link to it. Uh, I won't pull it up, but I'll put a link to it. And, you know, the title of this is How I Learned to Love the New World Order. And it was actually written by somebody with the initials J R B Jr who happens to be taking part tomorrow in a in a very very major ceremony and uh you know it just boggles the mind what what we see happen and go on on this planet uh yet we need to reclaim our sovereignty because people are sleepwalking through this reality and just giving their power away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, you know, we couldn't tell you how important it is to hold on to your own power, your sovereignty, your soul. This is the most important time now, now or never. Well, that was weird. I just saw something pop up out there. <laughs> yeah, that was really weird. Um, yeah, so we got to, we got to, we got to wake up. We got to speak our truth and keep speaking your truth. And again, the problem is the system. As long as we're in the system, we're handcuffed and hand hogtied. Mm -hmm. 
And if you could get it out of the system, then all of a sudden you do have a little bit of a personal chance. And that's key. Again, you know, things like homesteading, uh, you know, tiny home living, getting off grid, coming together with other people that can support you, or even within a community in a urban or suburban setting, just, you know, it's amazing what can be done. We talked about our friend and shown our friend Dave in the UK who's living in an apartment and he's growing like 80% of his food. So for him, he just have to tighten the belt a little bit and he, he doesn't need the stores, you know, because he's already self-sufficient in an apartment, right. in a flat, mm-hmm. you know, in an urban setting. It can be done. As I look at basil plants in the window. Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, he does have a little back porch and stuff, but he does it all right there. Yeah. And now he's actually went and rented uh, a small piece of property, which cost him, I think he said $50 a month, whatever that equivalent is. Um, and, but he, the production he's getting off of it is incredible. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a little, that these are the skills we got to be honing and they will buy us time because it is, it's a matter of time, Mm -hmm. you know, Time might not look like it, but it is on our side in the long run because we're going to a place where they can't go. Recognize, too, we are eternal souls. I mean, we're not going to just blink out of existence. Uh, If the body perishes, the consciousness still is. You don't blink out of existence. Uh, They know this, but what they want you to do is to live in fear live in anger, live in hatred, live in all the lower emotions that are going to make it so that when you do leave this body, you're coming right back to a realm where they can control it. Right, because they're not just trying to control this life. They're trying to control the next. That's the big thing. And so, you know, there are a lot of uh, ETs out there, extraterrestrials that are not of planet Earth and also interdimensionals that are on higher vibrational planes than us, but around us at the same time that are trying to help us. Uh, They believe in free will, so they won't directly interfere unless the dark side goes quite a bit too far. And, you know, this, this is something that many people just don't understand or can't grasp because of their uh, religious upbringing and indoctrination or because of the scientific upbringing and indoctr- indoctrination that they've gotten to uh, that also limit, limits their perspective on things. Mm-hmm. But yes, there are many, many, there, there are uncountable realms, uncountable planets that have beings on there of intelligence, some you know vastly superior to us, that are actually really rooting and cheering and praying for us and sending us positive energy. That's really, really important to acknowledge is that there is help out there and like Mike said, because of our upbringing, because of our conditioning, we don't dare ask because we have certain beliefs. And those, remember, those beliefs were put into place just to keep you under control. They trick us into giving our power away time and time again. Just think about it. The whole act of voting is saying, I agree to this. Right, yep. You know, so in, in one sense, if we voted, we agree to... We agree to some form of outcome. Well, we agree to the way they have the system set up if we vote. Yeah, and so they're getting us to acknowledge that we agree to the system. Yes. And they do this time and time and time again. And we have to you know, call them out for who they are and demand our power back. Mm-hmm. Um, about, yeah, it was like a year ago that we did this. And it was an affirmation of personal sovereignty, reclaiming our freedom. So I just wanted to play this for you guys. It only has 620 views, so not a lot of people have seen this. Um, But we need to do stuff like this. We need to just say it out loud because we've been tricked time and time again into giving our power away and accepting the system. Mm -hmm. It's through trickery. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Thank you guys for joining us. So, so much of the time in this world, we are kind of tricked into giving our power away. Well, Cindy and I were just talking about this, and we were saying how so many people don't realize we're giving our power away constantly. We're, we're making agreements by not speaking up and saying we do not consent. 
Yeah, we do not agree to whatever it is that we see going on around us. We do. We do that a lot. And, you know, using the emotions and stuff that are that are drummed up by certain things that happen in your life, they can take advantage of that and ultimately kind of um, make you their slave. So we just got done with a session with one of our good family members. And, you know, it, it just got me thinking, yeah, you know, there's enough people that don't realize this. There's a reason why, you know, everything that we see going on from the Simpsons movies predicting what's going to happen to, you know, whether it's Madonna or some other celebrity at the Super Bowl doing a depiction of, uh, you know, a ritual that's going on. Again, it's all letting us know what they're doing so that then they could go ahead and do it because they've given us fair notice. And by us not speaking up, we're sort of giving them our, our, our consent of a way, you know? So this is a very powerful thing to do. And we have done this before with a very similar mantra. Actually, part of this mantra is a mantra that Cindy and I have done before in order to make sure that we're sta stating our intent, that we are sovereign beings and we do not consent, even though, you know, the powers that be may try to get things over on us. We are very, very powerful beings. We are all source having its own journey in so many different myriads of, wa of ways and beings. So we need to claim our authority, and this is a mantra that can be done to do that. And so I'm going to say this mantra three times, as three is one of those numbers of manifestation and also of divinity. And so please join me if you feel so inclined. So as a free and sovereign being, I claim my own authority over my life and destiny. I renounce any pacts or agreements made with dark or malevolent forces. I connect to my higher self. The light of source grows in me. I am peace, love, and light. I am eternal bliss. As a free and sovereign being, I claim my own authority over my life and destiny. I renounce any pacts or agreements made with dark or malevolent forces. I connect to my higher self. The light of source grows in me. I am peace, love, and light. I am eternal bliss. As a free and sovereign being, I claim my own authority over my life and destiny. I renounce any pacts or agreements made with dark or malevolent forces. I connect to my higher self. The light of source grows in me. I am peace, love, and light. I am eternal bliss. So I just thought we would share this with you guys as we try to take our sovereignty back in an individual basis and also over the planet. Yeah, go ahead and give this a shot, and I'm sure you're going to be feeling a lot better in no time. As always, my friends, God bless and namaste. So I hope you guys will use that. And, you know, it, it is very, very powerful. It is. Doesn't it feel good, too? I mean, I, my whole body just started to relax just listening to that. It's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So, guys, as always, be safe. Be safe. Be positive. Hello, my friends. Evolutionary energy. There we go. Uh, be safe. Be positive-minded. Mm -hmm. You know, focus, focus on drawing your power, your personal power. There is a... Uh, there's a lot of things that we've covered and, and, and done in different videos. Uh, but there's a simple technique you could use, too, to draw down the light of source into you. As you breathe in, visualize a pure, br bright white light coming directly from source, from God. You know, the true prime creator of everything coming down from the heavens. Inhale it in through the crown chakra at the top of the head. And then exhale it out of the foot chakras into the earth. And with each inhalation, see your body glow in a pure white light. This white light will encapsulate you in positive energies. And it will also help to draw down that heavenly energy into yourself and into the earth. And, you know, it's, I would not underestimate the power of that simple meditation. Each inhalation drawing in more. 
of the light from source into you, exhaling it, sending it into the earth to help the earth in her ascension as well. And I, I love this. You're giving me ideas for different shows to do little specific meditations at the end of every show to kind of give people a way to process what's going on and fill themselves full of light. This is fun. It is. It's good stuff. We have a lot more planned yes. of self-empowerment. Yes. As long as we can speak it, we yeah. will speak it. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, we will just move from platform to platform as, as needed and uh, do what we can do. Mm -hmm. And so, as always, may you guys be blessed with abundant love, light, happiness. May you be able to fulfill your purpose here on this planet and help the planet itself raise up in vibration and frequency. As always, God bless. Namaste. Namaste.